Last week, Keith was progressing well with riveting the underside skins of the French wing, NX664. Also, Chris and Gerb were removing the inspection cover along the port wing of Just Jane, NX611, to remove the nuts from the studs holding the trailing edge and removing the trailing edge later in the week. Yeah, yeah, I don't think. They're a good long um, thread, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Does the stick through the nuts much? I don't know, I can't see from to the side. But yeah, yeah. You probably do, actually. Yeah. You know what I mean? You should do, a couple of threads, but yeah. you probably stick out a little bit more than that, to be fair. Yeah. This exposed the bolts holding the wing in place. Dave's makes the shorter fuselage formers that fit above the tailplane. Yeah, as you can see, it's quite damaged oh, in a bad yeah. way, so it doesn't even need paint stripping, just straight on and make a new one. Would it, would it, you won't bother to paint strip that, will it? No, because it's basically it's strapped, so um, yeah, we just make a wooden former and get one made. Have you made all wooden formers for yeah, these then? Yeah, I them, yeah, but because they're only little ones, it's quite easy. Yeah. Um, In the B25 restoration area, Andy was working on that Lancaster am ammunition feed. I heard a word with aid first. This is a feed assister. Oh, sorry. From the FNH2. So, um, what is this ammo feed? Uh, yeah. 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 Don't start now, Neville. Pardon? Don't what? start now, it's <laughs> lunchtime. <laughs> Come back after lunch. Neville. Come back after lunch. Neville. Andy. Andy, okay, yeah. Andy. Um, this is assisted ammunition feed, you say? Uh, ammunition, yeah, um, feed yeah. assister. So for the, uh, the 50 cals that go in the FNH2 tail gunners turret yeah. on the Lancaster. Yeah. Whereabouts does this fit then? In the tail, tail gunners section. Yeah, right tail onto turret. the gun. Yeah. 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 Basically, to get, to get the ammunition from the ammo tanks, which are quite low down, yeah. up to the guns, they, they fit to these because they, they power the power of the guns isn't enough to pull the ammunition out of the tank. Oh, yeah. So they fitted these with an electric motor, so the ammunition would come in, the motor would spin, and it would pull the ammunition up to the gun for when he's firing. Didn't they have a low 20 foot speed as well? Yeah, so, yeah. And that, that, that would join that, would it? It would, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this, this will kind of sit, sit low down um, under the gun and then pull yeah. the ammunition up into, into, the, into, the, um, into the gun. So we, we have two of them, I'll strip one down, so we're going to strip, strip them down, give them a good clean, get them working again. Uh, and hopefully we can get them fitted back in, into the turret. Yeah. Um, obviously the idea is just to make them as... Um, and you'll get into operation with that, the electric power. Yeah, that, that, that's the plan. Yeah, so we've got, we've got the motors off, so the electric motors. Um, we'll, get, we'll, we'll work these separately, so we'll get the motors in, into the electrical shop, get yeah. these stripped down and get these working. Um, and get, get electrical feed onto them to make sure yeah. that we get the gears, because obviously it's just a, basically it's a worm drive that then spins, so the, the motor will spin that way. Yeah. The worm drive will then translate that into a horizontal motion and then turn to pull the ammunition through. So Is that like a cog wheel? <coughs> exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so there's a, so the base of the spline on the motor will sit down, sit down there, yeah. and then there's a transverse gear that then pulls, uh, pulls the ammunition through. And this yeah, is automatically yeah. operated when the fires is going. It is, it? yeah. And there's, a, there's a micro switch, so it can, it'll sense the pressure. So when the pressure's on, the micro switch will, be, will power it up. Yeah. As, soon as, as soon as it lets go, the, the pressure of the belt will drop, then the micro switch will turn it off. Okay. So it's automatic, yeah. it only operates when he's pulling the trigger. So yeah. Very, very clever. Yeah. Um, obviously, they realised early on that because of the weight of the ammunition um, and the power of the gun, this wasn't enough to pull the ammunition. So hence they, uh, hence they designed this. Get the ammunition and you had so one either side. One, each one gun. yeah, twin, twin 50 cals, yeah. one, one for each gun. Yeah. Um, so as you can see, they're a little bit, um, look a little bit sorry of themselves, but yeah. hopefully we can get them all. First step really is to get stripped down, get it cleaned up, yeah. um, and then back, back together, get, get the motor working. Yeah. Is this was this your job in the RAF armory or what? So yeah, I'm an ex um, ex armorer. So I did 17 years as an armorer in the air force. Um, yeah, very, very much. So it's, it's great for me to go back to my 
back to my roots. Yeah, yeah work, working good. on working on weapon systems. So, yeah. yeah, really enjoying it. Really Is enjoying it, it in good condition? This or fair? Um, for its well, age, you, you can see. Yeah, for its age. I mean. I think because I got everything apart, that, that kind of says that yes, it is. Yeah. There's, there's, there's no there's no bits that we that we couldn't get apart. So no. that, that shows you that everything is um, so all the bolts, all the threads, all the nuts are all, are all good. What so. about the bearings? Are they all right? So far, yeah. So um, all you need to do is ship it down. Um, you can see, yeah, uh, bearing in mind how long it is since they've been, and this is without any kind of maintenance. So the oh, bearings, yeah, the bearings. Yeah. The bearings are in good, good, good condition. So that, again, that's a good sign. So they're in power since uh, they could then. Yeah, yeah. So it's just a good, a good clean. Yeah. Back together. And then and this will be all painted, clean. will it? It will. Yeah, yeah. Is it yeah. a different type of paint, or is it? It's just, just the way it feels. It's just the way it feels. Obviously, the um, it would have been green initially, but obviously yeah. that's faded, and then the aluminium oxide has, has come through. I and see. That's, that's, that's what's made it. Yeah. yeah. It felt like that too. Yeah. Paint you get for covering up the roof. Yeah, I'm right. I'm all right. <laughs> Felt like that. It but does. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Is that? Oh, that's where the bearings go. Is it? it? Is, yeah, yeah, bearing, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Very, um, oh. Have you yeah. got the other one? The, have you got the other? So oh, it, course, this is one. one. This, this is the other one. Yeah. So I'm, I'm only doing one at a time, so yeah. I can compare it. When I get when you put it back together again, I can compare it to this one. To yeah. make sure I put it together correctly. Yeah, well, that's true. So obviously we're, we're, we're lucky enough to have the um, to have the, the book as well. So we have the instructions for, for breaking it down and yeah. for reassembling it. Um, but, but even so, I'll leave this one complete. So, do, so, yeah. we, can, so we can make sure that yeah. it goes back together complete, and then then we'll do this one. What well, actually? This got a spring there, and does that come down then? So this, yeah, this, this just kind of rotates to keep keep oh, some keep the tension, keep some tension on the uh, on, on the belt as it goes, it goes through. So yeah. Okay. Did they used to jam up at all, or did um, they noted for it, or were they good? I'm not aware that they'd be jammed up. Yeah. I think I think they're, they're pretty good when they're yeah. going. Yeah, so it's not it's not it's not an issue that I'm aware that they, they had. Um, um, very little say maintenance for look yeah, of it. Yeah. They so, see on this bit. Look, when the when the tension's when it, there's a micro switch there, which, and that, that then powers the motor. Yeah. As soon as the tension goes, the micro switch just disengages, yeah. and then the motor cuts out. Yeah. Um, so when you press this, 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 this will tension the belt, and then as soon as it's pressing, it goes back, yeah. and then kills the micro switch. So I'll be a 24 volt system, um, as in the Lancaster. Yeah. 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 Just plug, plug into the main. Yeah. The main yeah. 24 volt system. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, as you say, we're looking at everything works, everything spins, ro rotates, so it's a, it's a good, it's a good sign. Yeah, it is. Uh, what about the rubber? Are they the right size or the worn? No, no, they're still, they're still, still the right size. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, to, to be fair, I, I don't know how much use it actually had. Yeah, uh, it, may, it may have been fitted and never used. So, yeah, um, no, so, so, so 1945 it was built, so perhaps it didn't have much. Well, exactly. Yeah. So look, look, you, looking what? at these, uh, they've not been not yeah. been used much. Which aircraft is this off? Is this off Jane or is it? Um, I'm not sure. I think John might be able to answer that. Where, where did these come from? They're off Jane, are they? Yeah, yeah. yeah, they are off Jane, yeah. Oh. yeah. So whatever happened to Jane happened to these? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, good Andy, that's yeah. thank you. I'll let you carry on. Keep it, keep it busy for a few months. Yeah. <laughs> The port side wing tip and trailing edge have been removed along with the aileron. Got those to remove. Number one Merlin engine removed with engine bearers.
subframe still attached to the wing, held on with three bolts. The rear bucket for the subframe will be removed from the wing along with the front support struts and fitted to the French wing NX664. This is the wing that Keith has built. The port side wing tip has been removed. The purple tape on the aileron is holding the flaps in position so not to fall to the down position. The aileron is an aluminium frame with an aluminium skin on the leading edge only. It was then covered with Irish linen and several coats of dope applied. This tightened up the Irish linen fabric. Fabric coated. This is the back of the rear spar. The trailing edge is attached to this with studs. If you look carefully, you can see the studs of a boss of about one eighth of an inch, which the trailing edge butts up to, leaving a gap between the two surfaces. This prevents the skins on the wing and trailing edge from fouling each other due to flexing of the wing structure, which would cause the skins of the two surfaces to lift and crack. A weather seal is applied between the two surfaces. This is the rear nut and bolt that holds the subframe and the rear spar and one of the front two nut and bolts which are connected to the front spar struts. More parts that had to be removed for the restoration and servicing. On to Keith and the French wing. Uh, rivets in the other side now, have you? On no. The, underneath, no. I've got all the skins on yet. Oh. Oh, oh and this is the door, is it? It was on about. A bit crumpled. Yeah. And this is the um, one from Canada, which is not quite right. Can you use any of the parts then? Yeah, we can use what, what bits we've got, any bits we can't use for the. Uh, Shake one. Yeah, the shake one. Yeah. Hopefully it all fit. Yeah. I'm sure it will. <laughs> we don't need to. <laughs> oh, I'm a positive person. What about the engine mounts? Will you be fitting those in? Yeah, you got to before that skin goes on. Four weeks. Oh. Got skins up, there you yeah. The one that's got pegs around it. Oh, I oh. Yeah, you might the engine might go on the top, you need to get underneath. Do the bolts up. And what about the wooden um, um, brackets you were making with the aluminium facing on? Yeah, that, that, that's, that's one of the stages on. Yeah. <laughs> and you've got all this riveted up now have you? All up, up, solid rivets all the way round. Yeah. And that one. And that one, yeah. And you've got that door already pinned up somewhere haven't you? No, it's uh, the, the top bit of it. They've taken the top bit off made new bits for it. And yeah. Just shoved in the corner. Oh. And you can't put those stringers in the last piece until you do more work inside. 
really good. Now I've got some bracketry to rivet on. Yeah. And then the uh, then the bottom string will go in. Yeah. Because then I've got a bit of those engine plates. Yeah. You know the control plates. They've got to go in. Yeah. And then the other string has got to go in. Yeah. So it's to run all the engine control through. Yeah. And you've got a box to fit on there with the engine controls, isn't there? In the oh yeah, that's that's their problem. The engine boys, I think. Yeah. Or whoever, mechanics problem, that's all it is. Oh, it's just the structures. Yeah. Hello, Chris boy. Hey, up. You alright? Yes, sir. Very good. Yeah, we've got on well with this now. Oh, aye. Yeah. yeah, well, they said get the trailing edge off, so we took it off. Yeah. It yeah. came off alright, didn't it? Uh, yeah, not too bad. Yeah. Oh, you had didn't have any trouble with the nuts on the stuff then? Um, we, well, we did have a look at the tip of it. wasn't an issue. No. It was, uh, so all them studs that come out the trailing edge of the spark. Yeah. All the nuts came off, so none of the studs spun, which is a bonus. Yeah. Because some of them you can't get to the back of them unless you start de-skinning. So, um, anyway, I gets up on top of the wing. They're all down here, all of them, all getting ready to catch this trailing edge. And it was stuck around about two thirds of the way up from this end to that end. Wouldn't come off, wouldn't shift. I was like, something not right here. So I says, shouts downstairs, I says, can we just confirm that all the nuts are off? Yeah, yeah, they're all off. So I thought, probably PIC some ceilings and stuff, probably holding it on. Anyway, it's getting five o'clock, right. Let's sack it, we'll have another crack tomorrow. So next morning, gets in. Half Gets up on safety razor with torch, has a good look round. I guess what I found? I found a nut. Yeah, just one. Still fitted. Yeah. Anyway, so once we've undone that nut, it's amazing really because we managed to take it off the back of the wing. Oh, good. So we got it off. <coughs> um, took the earlier one off yesterday. So that's off now. Yeah. yeah. So what we're going to do, I'm going to stick it on these wheels, on these trolleys, and then we're going to wheel it up to that end next to where that fuselage is and yeah. jig. Yeah. Um, because obviously Dennis is going to start working this. Yeah. Um, and obviously get the jig set up ready for, for making yeah. another trailing edge. Yeah. Down on those two small trolleys. Yeah, I reckon. The lad started to remove the nose section of the French fuselage from the paint shop, which Mike had painted. But it's a tight fit, so the doors and cupboards had to be removed. Mike had made a good job, including matching the camouflage.
Very small, didn't it? Rebuild them. Um, rebuild the paint box. Dave collected from the paint shop some of the fuselage parts he had made and that Mike had painted. It's getting to be a big macaw now, isn't it? I know. <laughs> if you have a few bits left over to start another Lancaster. There's always bits left over. Yeah.